Next-gen consoles share a lot in common, but major features like Xbox Game Pass, PS Now, exclusive games, controllers, and SSDs will set them apart. Between Sony and Microsoft, were set to experience the technological jump in next-gen hardware with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. However, if you've been keeping up from a technical perspective, you may realize that these two upcoming systems share a lot in common. From the AMD-built CPU and GPU to the ultra-fast solid-state drives, both consoles are sure to deliver similar top-end performance. But here, we're going to focus on what sets them apart. Now that we've seen our first glimpse at what the PlayStation 5 can do, as well as several third-party titles running on Xbox Series X, more differences between the two systems have become clear. Aside from a few key hardware details, the PS5 and Xbox Series X have some notable differences. Exclusive games, subscription services, controllers, backward compatibility, expandable storage, form factor. These are all ways the new consoles are forming the distinct identities and setting the stage for the upcoming generation. Platform exclusive games. Microsoft has made significant moves in recent years by acquiring multiple development studios to bring into its first-party Xbox Games Studios umbrella. While it means that these dev teams get the support of a giant like Microsoft, it also means Xbox platforms get exclusive games. Sony hit strong with exclusives in the PS4 era. The first PS5 reveal featured 18 games, and while some will also come to other consoles, others will only be playable on PS5. Several first-party sequels have already been announced as PS5 exclusives like Spider-Man, Miles Morales, at your service. The future of the gaming landscape is going to revolve around subscription services more than ever. Xbox user or not, you have to admit that Xbox Game Pass has been a revolution in how games are discovered and played. In what you can easily deem, the Netflix of gaming, Game Pass provides access to download and play any game in its library for a subscription cost, including all first-party titles on release day. Sony has been making moves as well with PlayStation Now. While it's not nearly as robust as Game Pass, it shares similarities in granting access to a large library of games, PS4 and PS2 games on PS Now can be downloaded locally or streamed while PS3 games can only be streamed. Backwards compatibility and smart delivery. Backward compatibility has been a huge feature in rounding out the Xbox One and continues to be a major key for Microsoft going into the Xbox Series X. Not only does Series X play every Xbox One game available, it also carries on all the work that's been done in making Xbox 360 and original Xbox games backward compatible as well. In many ways, Series X represents a unification of every Xbox generation. Sony is embracing backward compatibility in a major way for the PS5, especially compared to how it has with the PS4 and PS3. However, the details on how it'll exactly work are a little iffy, even coming from Sony. The messaging has been that Sony, believes an overwhelming majority, of PS4 games will be backward compatible, but will have to evaluate this on a game-by-game -game basis. PS4 games are expected to take advantage of PS5's capabilities by boosting performance and resolutions, too. Sensible controller improvements. Microsoft isn't deviating too far from its tried and true controller design for the next generation. The Xbox Series X controller has a minuscule, largely unnoticeable, change in ergonomics, a new share button at the center, and USB-C connection. The directional pad does feature a major overhaul by going with a disc-like 8-way D-pad by default. Otherwise, it's the familiar Xbox One gamepad, and still uses two AA batteries to power itself. The PS5's DualSense controller not only continues to differentiate itself from Xbox's design, but it's also the biggest departure from the longtime DualShock. The initial model has a two-tone design and a slightly bulkier form, but a number of additional features are worth noting. The DualSense has a built-in microphone, a revamped share button that's now called the Create button, adaptive L2 and R2 triggers, haptic feedback, and a USB-C connection. The DualSense uses a built-in rechargeable battery like its DualShock predecessor, and Sony states that it'll have improved battery life and a headphone jack. Current Xbox users should be happy to know that all Xbox One controllers are forward compatible, meaning they'll work on the Xbox Series X, albeit without the new share button. Sony has yet to say anything about DualShock 4 controller being compatible with the PS5. Changes in form factor. One of the more surprising things about the Xbox Series X when it was first revealed last year was its physical appearance. This is a major departure from most consoles in history, going with a primarily vertical rectangular form factor, like a big-ass brick. 
Of course, you'll be able to lay the console sideways but its dimensions are unlike any Xbox or console before it. The PlayStation 5 has ditched the all-black design used for the PS2 PS4 in favor of a white exterior, and the result is a very distinctive design. The console sports a similar look to the DualSense controller with a two-tone design, and from a certain angle, when it's sat upright, it looks like it's wearing a hood. SSD Storage Wars both the Xbox Series X and PS5 will utilize solid-state drives for ultra-fast storage, taking advantage of NVMe tech that's currently available on high-end PCs and even pushing that forward. Sony's been forthcoming with its benchmarks to showcase just how fast its SSD will be, and developers working with Xbox Series X have mentioned similar revolutions in storage speed on Microsoft's console. However, internal storage capacity is slightly different between the two, Xbox Series X comes with a 1TB SSD while the PS5 has a 825GB SSD. Thanks for watching.